do finally manage to pin you down, mate. Yeah, um, let me. I've been following you on Instagram and you're still super fit. I mean, what kind of training are you doing now? Are you doing any boxing training at all or is it fitness training? Not so much boxing training. Like, if I, Obviously, if I, it's a bag, yeah, I might go on a bag or a couple of rounds or do a speedball. I'm pretty good on speedball. Um, ball to ceiling, punch ball, like a little bit of that, but not as much as I used to do. I there's a little bit of CrossFit training, a bit of bodyweight exercises, so I mix it up. Yeah. Are you as fit now as you were back in the day? Um, cardio fitness, not as fit as I was, but I'm more stronger because I find um, with the strength work, with the CrossFit train I do, I do a lot of strength work on muscle ups. I never done muscle ups when I was fighting. Um, also, a lot of stuff I never done um, when I was fighting is um, what I do today, you know, which I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good at deadlifts, and um, I could deadlift about 170 kilos for my weight. That's not bad, really. So, yeah. So, yeah, I'm pretty you, strong. You're training every day? Yeah, not more or less, about five days a week. Since, you know, I have a day off in a week, two days. So what is it then? Is it just something that you've always done and it's part of a routine or is it something that clears the mind? Is it, you know, there's a, there's a whole lot of people talking about mental health and, and what training does for them. Is that your therapy? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of both really. I was, it's always been in me to be, um, you know, train hard. I always loved training. I was training when I was a young kid. When I was young, I was a young kid in school, I was a play sport. I was very, um, very active, like, you know, and I was like, football, rugby, and then I got into boxing when I was nine years old. So yeah, I love it. I what love position training. did you play rugby? Me on a win. <laughs> well, yeah. So I was, yeah, I was fast. How'd you pegged as a scrum half there for a bit? Um, no, no, I, I prefer the ring. I just run around with them and just, I was a good dodger, like, you know, so pretty so quick. If you were doing the other sports, so how did you get exposed to boxing? Um, you know, um, boxing, it was a local boxing gym where I, was, where I lived in Ely. And um, it was just like this around the corner, and my older brother took me on the gym. And um, I was around about nine years old. I was going on ten. He was he was boxing. He's a, he's a little bit older than me. But he didn't keep the boxing going, but I kept on going in. And um, I just, you know, joined the gym and never looked back ever since. Did he box as an amateur? Yeah, when he had one amateur fight, <laughs> yeah, one fight he lost him, and then he just gave up. Then he just, you know, undedicated. He was very strong. He was a southpaw. He was my brother. He's a little bit short than me, but strong southpaw. Good um, left handed southpaw. He had a good punch on him, but um, not as much as skillful as me. Like, but he was very strong, like you know. So why did you stay? And he he obviously left after that. Why did you stay at the gym? What was it about boxing that you enjoyed? No, I just liked it. I liked the contact sport. I liked contact, and um, I enjoyed um, obviously the fitness, the training, and I felt good. And um, my old trainer was there. He was watching us train me and my brother. He said, um, "You're a little bit more talented than your brother. Oh, no, you're a quicker learner. You pick up things a little bit quicker." I said, you know, and um, and I just loved it. Like and ever since then, I just thought and keep it going. I just, you know, love training. Yeah. Um, with regards to that early start around when you were playing football, rugby, and that did, was boxing your first love. Were you more passionate about it than the other sports? Um, yeah, it was. Yeah, because I always watched boxing when I was um, when I was on about seven, eight. I was watching Muhammad Ali and um, Shuri and Leonard and Olympic fighters, and um, I was watching. I was, oh, I love, it, I love it, I love it. And then it was a local boxing gym on the corner. I thought, oh, I want to join a gym. And then I said to my older brother, Paul, I said, take me to the gym, Paul, take me. Oh, yeah, okay, come along with me. And then, um, yeah, I joined and then, you know, I never looked back. I also, I like Sugar Ray Robinson as well. He's one of my favorite fighters growing up as well. He was a great, great fighter. Pound for pound, the best fight of all time, I believe. Uh, what did your parents do for work? Um, I was only one parent family. So, um, so my, my, my mother and father split them when I was about four or five. So I didn't really see much of my father. And um, my mother... Was um, obviously unemployed, but now and again she would work part time in, in um, obviously as a cleaner. But it wasn't, we didn't have much in Ely, and um, yeah, one parent family didn't have much. I had an older brother and a younger sister, so um, we um, we lived in Ely. Yeah, so it was um, one easy. I remember reading actually. Your, your dad was part of the Windrush generation, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah, um, he's um, he's actually getting he's getting on now. He's on about eighty six now. So yeah, he was. Yeah. So um, I think he wanted to go back to Jamaica. And somehow they couldn't find his um, passport or whatever, all, all his papers. And then um, he tried to get his papers back. They wouldn't give it back to him. And he was quite disappointed, like, you know. Um, you said there that your amateur coach or, or one of your first coaches said that you picked things up quickly. So boxing came quite naturally to you. Yeah, it did. Yeah, you know, um, I was a quick learner. I was a switcher. Um, but he adapted my style to stay all orthodox because I'm a left-handed orthodox. I my, my strong hand is my left hand. But I was a switcher as a goal southpaw and punch there and, and then go orthodox. But then somehow Ronnie was Ronnie Rush was like very very strict uh, strict trainer and he said right you stick to orthodox now because you're a you're a good left hook and I like to throw the left hook to the body 
they will say the left hook to the body is a per perfect punch in it. So you catch one. Um, actually, if I throw a left hook to your side, it's actually on your right side is where all your liver and kidneys are. So, you know, it's a weaker side, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so you boxed, you had a few fights, mm -hmm. and then you had a break and then went back to it. Yeah, I did. Um, I went through phase on about 12, 13, I think I stopped then for a bit. Um, I just went through phase, I, I mixed with the wrong people. And not say wrong people, like it was just like I was mixing, I was, I got into um, a bit of drugs here and there, you know, and then I, I miss, I did smoke for a bit. I even tried to wacky back even went through phase and then um, I thought to myself, ah, I can't be doing this. It's not for me. And the funny thing is I, I bumped into my old trainer, Ronnie Rush, in an actual um, door office and um, we sign on, I was signing on and he was signing on. He said to me, hi Steve, how are you? Hey, I'm good man. Uh, I don't know why you give up the box. you've got a lot of talent, so you know, you could go all the way, you could be a world champion. I looked at him and I said, hmm. And um, he said, why don't you come back into training? And I said, you know, give it a go. I think I was around about 18 then. So I decided like um, to give it a go. I was on a YTS scheme as well. I wouldn't want to do much here. I was, on, I was doing um, paint and decorating, a bit of carpentry as well. And then I decided to take a boxing in and um, had a few amateur, senior amateur fights and about 10 amateur fights as a senior. And then I turned professional with um, Di Gardner. Did you go badly off the rails in those teenage years? Yeah, I think I did. Yeah, I was um, went through phase. Um, I was um, and around the streets. I had a few street fights as well. One time I had a street fight and um, some kid was picking on my on my friend. Friend, he was only small. I said, leave him alone. And he was a big, biggish boy. And I said, he said, well, what are you going to do? What do you think you are? I said, well, I said leave my mate alone. What's the matter with you? So um, he put his hands up like that, like if you want to fight me. And I said, so, Okay, so I went into southpaw stance and I threw a double body shot, no, double left to the body, and overhand left. Boom, knocked him out. Knocked him clean out, he was on the floor. And I thought, you know, because, and I walked off then. And the next minute, then the pe people, um, um, I got, and I think he, and the guy didn't drop the charges, that's what it was. He was a bit of a troublemaker, this guy, because he's a bit of a bully. So uh, luckily, um, I, I got away with it. But one guy, one guy stopped me in the street. It was a Cockney guy. He said, hey man, you got a lot of talents. He said, um, you should take a boxing. I said, I was a boxer. I said, you know, I don't box no more. No. I, was, I was around about 17 then. And then he said, you, you go a long way. You've got a, got a good dig on you, mate. I said, mm, yeah, I will. I'm, I think about it. And then I, I bumped into the running rush when I was about 18. And he said, I decided, well, I've got to take it up. You know? Had you missed it or were you just too immersed in that other lifestyle to really miss it? A bit of that. I missed it a bit. I did always miss the boxing. And also I was just, I was just in, that, in that rut. You know, it's, a, it's like a rut in it. it you're mixing with the wrong people and everything, and yeah, I was in a bit of a rut, like, you know, so. But luckily, boxing got me off the streets. It got my mind disciplines and obviously my mindset. Um, I always loved training, I loved, I loved doing something, and um, the mindset, I had a very strong mindset and, um, and a determination. You know, yeah, I never looked back ever since. So when you turned over then, what was the dream? What was the expectation? Yeah, I turned over, I thought, I'm a professional boxer. I was only 20 years old, I was quite young when I turned professional, and, um, yeah, um, and my first pro fight, I won I actually in Cardiff, Star, um, Star, um, I think it's a legend, so yeah. I won my very first um, professional fight. Um, yeah, I Alan, dropped the guy. Yeah, I dropped him a few times. I almost knocked him out. And um, that was a, that was around about that time. I met my um, missus and um, his mother, her mother, was saying, oh, you're a good fighter. Oh, yeah, you're in the paper. I said, what was it? So I looked in the air, called a local paper, and I was in a paper there. The guy was on the floor. I was like, Dad, looking over like that. And it's like, you know, I dropped him with a left hook. But no, I didn't stop him. Like, but... So yeah, um, Boxing News said you left hooked your way to an impressive win over Neath's Alan Roberts. Your second fight was actually less than two weeks later. You were very busy when you turned over. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But your third fight was a loss in Cardiff to Nicky Lucas over eight rounds. Um, how did that fight go down? I thought I won it. There's a lot of fights I thought I won, but it was only half a point. But um, it, was, it was a close fight. It was quite a big featherweight. It's tall, but a little bit taller than me. Like, and um, I thought I won that fight, but it was close. I thought myself, I was, it was, you know, I, I didn't have to win. Like, how disappointed were you to, to get the first blemish on your record? I was quite disappointed, but I thought myself, uh, Ronnie Ronnie said to me, he said, oh, you won that fight, this and that, but um, you, you should have done better. He always said to me, he always used to say to me, you could do better. If you put all your fins all together, you'd be a world beater. And I said, mm, yeah, I know. But then he said, you've got a good jab. You force good body shots and everything. But it's just, when I was um, up and coming, I didn't really have the experience to like put it all, all together. Like, you know? but, um, Did you think that? Did you think you could be a world beater? Because that's, you know, that, that's an awful, an awful long way away from you know, just turning out. 
Yeah, yeah, I believe there. You know, I believe I could, um, you know, because in the gym, I was a trainer's gym. My hands are, qu I have very quick hands and the way I move and, uh, you know, bum, 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 you know, and uh, I believed in myself, but I actually had to transfer that into the ring. So uh, people would look good on pads and or bags or whatever. But then my old trainer would say to me, you've got to transfer that into the ring. I say, yeah, no, that's true. It's, it's different when you're you fighting someone who's a moving target, they're moving all the time. So you've got to hit something when, you, you move, when they're moving, but then it's a big difference. You could see people on the pads, well, he looks good or she looks good. And then when they put them in the ring against somebody, it's a different the average, yeah. So, you know, he's a different, different game. Um, I love this. Um, your six twos with John Devine were so lively, it drew nobbins. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they did, yeah. Did they it? So explain to people what, what nobbins means. Well, you know, I don't know, they throw money in the ring, don't they? Yeah. As far as I know. Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it actually did. It threw a few coins and, you know. How much did you make, do you know? I can't remember now. <laughs> did you back. split it with him? Or did, were you both running around trying <laughs> know, to get it? No, he just gave it all to me. He's a rabbit. Oh, so that's good, man. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it was a good fight. It was quite an entertaining fight. I think he was a bit of a favourite as well, but I, I beat him. Then, so, yeah. It's one of the most, um, I want to say outdated, but traditional ways that boxers get money you know people who feel like they've had value for money in the crowd would launch mm. their money into the ring wouldn't they yeah i know man didn't it? <laughs> it's, it's good though. but yeah i mean it's a, it's a real way of showing respect though isn't it i guess mm. yeah yeah um you lost to debutant marcel herbert claude abrams thought herbert looked like a young errol christie was he good he was good yeah 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 he was um, good that was a very close fight again um um actually i come into that fight um eight stone 12 or eight thirteen, and you come in you come in a ball Nine stone four or five. He was. He had about almost half a stone advantage over me, and I thought he was strong. And um, I thought I didn't have to win the game. That was a close fight, but it was a bit of a um, weight of difference. Like you knew he's a bigger boy than me. You are now three and two. You still think you can be a world champion? Yeah, you know, I still believe okay. I could do, um, do something in, in the game. I was a bit um, gutted. Like I, I, you know, my record's not great, but but Ronnie Rush always believed in me. He said to me, "So you could go a long way." But at the end of the day. You lost that fight, you should have won that fight, you should have done this, you should have done that, and this and that. I said, man, I know, I know. But he's always criticised me, but then he praised me. When I do something um, good, he said, yeah, that's the way to do it, that's the way to do it. And I said, yeah, okay. Um, you stopped Shane Sylvester in two rounds on a Pat Caldell show. Uh, Boxing News ran the headline, a shocker for Shane. Um, so you were sort of the, the headline act on that, Bill. Do you remember that fight, Shane Sylvester? Yeah, I remember that fight. Um, yeah, the guy come come out come out boxing me, and then I just um, listened to Ronnie at the time. I don't know for somehow I just focus what he said. Well, you got to do this, and you should do this, do that, and then everything fell into place. And then I just got my jab going. I, I think I dropped him in the right hand, my back hand. That's my weaker hand, and um, yeah, yeah, that was a good performance. Uh, Boxing News said again the scoreline was harsh in your fight against Tim Driscoll, who was t uh, he was twelve and three. It was an exciting fight, and said that you didn't deserve to lose by the margin you lost in that. Yeah, yeah, I think I did. Um, well, he, was, he just beat me by experience, really. And um, I admit, um, that's the only defeat I feel. I lost fair and square. But all the other losses I I fought, they say nine losses. Out of nine losses, I thought I lost about three. But all the other other losses, I thought I got robbed. But, um, you know, it's weird, isn't it? Um, Russell Davison was on the verge of fighting for the Commonwealth title when he fought you, but you beat him. Boxing News said you beat him on fitness and speed. So those yeah. two things that you had back in the day that you still got now. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's my hands, hands speed, and you know, that's important. Like you know, um, hands speed, good, um, good timing. You know, if he's on the verge of a Commonwealth title fight, that's got to tell you that you're going in the right direction. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, I beat some obviously people. Good, good prospects, and um, you know, and I was upset that um, their plans really. So you know, you were brought in as like the B side against Drew Doherty. Um, this one, this one should be a good one, and sort of uh, generates some feeling within you because you felt you were robbed against Drew. That was the worst rob we have ever had. Um, Terrible. The crowd booed. MC Mike Goodall had to say, "Gentlemen, we're a sporting club," because the place was getting out of hand. It was. It was bad. Um, and Boxing News did say it was an astonishing decision. Is there any point in during this where you think it's just not going to work out? You know, I'm not getting the decisions. Mm. You know, this it's not for me. Let's do something else. I was actually at, at that fight. I went through phase of oh, I'm going to join the army. I said to my wife, I said, um, I think I might give a boxing. I might just join the army in school. And um, somehow I just didn't do it in the end. I just stuck with the boxing. I was going to give it up and join the army, but I didn't. What appealed about the army? Fitness stuff? Yeah, you know, I just always thought, the yeah, I mean, you know, it's a fitness all, so you could get a Creole to it as well. I know it was going to be tough, like, I would have been hard, but, but um, you know, I was, I'm quite hard, hard person, hard and mentally and, t and, physically, and physically, you know. Now, physically any regrets hard. that you didn't pursue that? 
Um, no, no, no. Really. I probably could have gone in the army. I could have boxed in there. That's the reason why I wanted to go in the army and do boxing there as well. Like, but, um, you know, but um, maybe I could have gone in the army. Um, you were five and five at this point. <laughs> Is that? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's like, you know, it's not got, you haven't got world champion written all over you. Yeah, no records to me, nothing really. But then obviously, like those losses, some of those losses, I thought I'd, I won, like, you know, so with a Drew Doherty one, that was a bad decision. And then um, there's a few others as well. Yeah, so then came Alan McKay in London. You lost that one. And you were now five and six, so you got a losing record at this point. But Boxing News said you were clearly upset at the verdict. So You sure have well, five wins and six losses, are you sure? I, I think it was yeah. around that. Mm, I don't know. I thought I had more, more wins and losses. I'm sure I did. Okay, um, maybe, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe there's, yeah. maybe I found, maybe I made a mistake there, but, That's what I mean. um, but yeah, I mean, after Alan McKay though, it said that you were clearly upset at the verdict. Yeah, that was another one as well, another bad um, decision, and I thought I won, and I feel, I feel like, um, it's a, I'm not, sh I'm not saying it's um, racism, but I feel, you get a home fighter, a white home fighter, and you get a black fighter from Wales going to England, and I feel. You know, that's you know, obviously a disadvantage, you know, and I feel like I got robbed a few times because of that, really. Gee. Being Welsh and also being black. Gee, yeah. Have you said that before anywhere? What's that? <laughs> Have you said that before anywhere? No. No. Um, but that was in your mind, that was, that was what you were thinking at, at the, the time. time. At the time, Ronnie, Ronnie was, would say it we'd, between us, but I wouldn't say it out like I just thought I'd keep to myself, like, but I'm obviously, to this day now, I feel like I'm just going to just let people know, like, you know, I feel like I'm... A lot of my decisions, I got, I got beat. I feel like it's because I was being Welsh and being black as well. I feel at this time you were working in a shop. Yeah, Devlin's. De Devlin's. Yeah, yeah. What was that like? All right. Yeah, good man. Was, um, I got to meet a lot of people, and um, I was working in the storeroom. I was every now and again I was going to the shop floor, dropping stock off and everything. So I got to know people, more people there as well. I think that's the reason why I'm, I had a good following. When I was world champion, I had a good following. Like you know, yeah, people course. knew of me and everything. So yeah. Um, you beat Neil Haddock, Drew with Brian Roche, beat Russell Davidson again, uh, Colin Lynch, Peter Harrison, and then you were unbeaten in 1991 with three fights and three wins. Um, so going in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, Finn Stadder fought on the police then. Yeah. But then 92 comes and you lost to Henry Armstrong. Uh, Boxing News said he started fast and you, and you just couldn't make the ground up in the end. Reason why? Reason why I lost that fight. I admit I, I, that, that's a proper loss, I had a loss. I was working um, shift work. 12 hour shifts, no, no excuses, um, but um, I was working night shifts and I was training hard as well. And then, then I think I worked a night, night shift before that fight and then I, I boxed Henry Armstrong and then um, I just didn't really, I didn't have the, um, the tank. You know, like I said, like I said in, in um, the news, I said I started fast and then I just faded. That's yeah. what happened. Yeah. You know? Um, you lost to Neil Haddock, uh, 1986 Commonwealth silver medalist in what was called a fierce battle for the uh, vacant Welsh crown. You'd previously beaten him on a cut, um, but then it said shop worker Robinson 21 was completely unmarked after 10 torrid rounds and he says he's ready for action again anywhere at Britain or anywhere in Britain at any time. Yeah, you know, um, the second fight, yeah? Yeah. That was a damn bad um, decision again. It was bad. It was, um, you know, you see his face, he's like the elephant man and then um, they want to mark me. And then um, I feel like I won that fight fair and square. I beat him all easier the, the, first, the first time. First time I stopped him with a cut. Uh, I remember the very first time I bo he boxed me. He was a little bit more experienced and he hurt me in that fight a few times. And um, But then somehow I caught my left hook and I cut, I cut him up and I just kept on throwing left, left, left. And then the referee stopped it. But then the second time I boxed him, I, I, I gained a little bit more experience. and. Um, I feel like I won that fight. I've won. I won that fight by about three, three, four rounds. And somehow they give it to him. The same again. He's a home fighter, and also being white. No offense. And I was black, so I don't know. And I'm Welsh as well. Like so. We've got we've got a reoccurring a recurring theme here because you then won four on the bounce and then went to France to fight Labduni, lost the decision, and it says again that you were. See, it seemed that you were hard done by out there. Yeah. Yeah. Same again. That was a very close fight. Like I said, he was a home fighter. But you when you fight abroad, like you know, you always got to knock them off to win in it, really. Isn't it? So you start several rounds behind. Really? When you're when you start several rounds behind. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, abroad. yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's always a two round start for them, isn't it? The home fight, isn't it? It's the same for me. Like you know, when I was world, world champion, is it? Is it? You know, obviously gives you a bit of a lift, isn't it? So yeah. So after Lab Dooney, Die Gardner said you were ready for anyone in Britain, and then came the call that would change the traje trajectory of your life and your career. So after a loss to Lab Dooney. You get a phone call 
Yeah, and um, you know, set the scene. Yeah, I get a phone call. Um, mad. Um, after them, I was um, at my mother-in-law's and um, just finished pieing ships with my wife and my young son Luke. He was two years old then. And um, next minute, I get a phone call from my old trainer, Ron Rush. So it was a big fight for you. I said, "Oh, when's that?" He said, oh, two days time. Uh, two days time. Time uh, for the world title fight." I went, hmm, I won't be ready. He said, yes, you will. He said, it's a big opportunity for you. If you lose, you lose the world champion, but you won't lose. Um, I said, okay. I spoke to my wife. I said, um, I've got to have world title fights. She said, oh, you must be mad. But, um, you know, I said, you know, I've got to do it, man. I've got to do it for that son and that family. I said, oh, she all, all the best. Good luck. Just do it for, do it for, that, for that kid, like, you know, or for that young boy. So like. what was the motivation? Was it financial or was it that it was the opportunity to win a world title? Uh, mostly the world, world title, but it was a financial as well. Like obviously, didn't have much, and um, I was up and coming. But yeah, it was a bit of both, really. And what did you think about John Davidson? Obviously, he would have been in camp um, training for a fight. And well, explain to everyone what happened with with Davidson and Ruben Palacios. Oh yeah, um, Ruben Palacios um, had HIV, and um, so he had the strip in the world title. That was actually just a few days before the fight. Um, so they obviously called me. And I took this opportunity. They, they called a few other boxes, but they said, no, I'm not ready, no way. They were able to make the weight, so I had to lose about half a stone. I was about half a stone over the weight after eating pine chips, about seven pounds over the weight. So the way I got the weight off, I had done a couple of runs. Um, I wore a blanket to keep, uh, get a sweat out and everything, and um, I done loads of body weight exercises, and the sweat came out of me then. Was there part of you that said two days, just not enough notice? Yeah, yeah, of course it was. Yeah, it was this thing. It's crazy, but at this day and age, you wouldn't do that now. They wouldn't sanction, sanction that kind of um, fight. You know, they, obviously you got to have more notice in it. But um, but years ago, it was different, like isn't it. So yeah. Well, someone has pointed out subsequently uh, that Billy Joe Saunders wanted several weeks' notice for the Canelo fight that's been sort of rumoured all this time. So, what do you make of fighters today who who want more and more notice? You know, ten, twelve week training camps and so forth. Personally, given that you did it on two days' notice. Yeah, I know, I know. Personally, I think like ten weeks is a good, um, good amount of time to train. Like, but then some people think um, you can overtrain sometimes. You you be stale, you know. So, if you're a naturally fit person like I was, and then um, you know you don't need a lot, a lot of time to train for the World Title Fight, about eight weeks. You know I mean so? Where were you going to watch Palacios and Davison? Where were you going? Were you going to go to the fight? No, no, really, no, no, no. I heard, I heard of it. That fight was a big fight, and I thought mm, it was a good fight, interesting fight. Because obviously, Ruben Palacio beat Colin McMillan. Yeah, he injured his shoulder, didn't he? and um, yeah, I thought that's going to be an interesting fight. And that night, the story of the Cinderella Man was born. <laughs> well, in fact, there was a Cinderella Man long before with Jim Braddock back in the 30s, but mm. Boxing News headliner called you Cinderella Man. I think the commentators that night on ITV did as well. Um, it was an incredible turn turnaround for you, wasn't it? To go from one week where, you know, or, or having lost that previous fight to Labduni in France mm. and think, you know, things just aren't going to go my yeah, way imagine. to then being the world champion. I know, yeah, yeah, it was... Um it was the preparation was very short, you know, so um, I meant to make the weights and then I travelled to um, Newcastle. We actually flew up to um, flew by plane. Didn't take us long to get there. And um, yeah, prepared. The weighing was actually on the day, 12 o'clock weighing. And um, weighed in, made the weights. And yeah. <laughs> there was some outrage at the time, wasn't there? Some people saying that you weren't a worthy contender. Yeah, yeah, obviously, because um, I'm, you know, I'm, because of my record, isn't it? obviously I never, I had a full nine losses and then it didn't look good really. But I'm obviously I was a I was an intercontinental champion, a Welsh champion as well. So yeah, I feel like um, I deserve the shot. But um, you know, how did being a champ change your mindset? My mindset is this made me uh, a better fighter because um, when I won the world title, I couldn't believe it. I had to pinch myself. I was actually world champion, and um, my mindset has changed and just made me a better fighter. And I thought myself. I want to prove pre um, people wrong that I'm a, tr a true world champion. And then, you know, when I defended against um, Sean Murphy, and then, you know, he was a British champion, but then I still wanted to prove that I was a true world champion. Then I started beating next world champions, and then people realized well, how good I was then. It's a big thing that it shows what confidence can do to a fighter, doesn't it? Yeah, they do. Yeah, you know, confidence is um, it's important, like, you know, and self belief and mindset. And also, I always believed in train hard. And um, my mindset was good, like, um, you know, I trained hard. 
Having been disappointed a few times, did you think you were going to get a decision up there when you when you fought for the world title? Did you think it would go your way? So it was a split decision, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. I thought myself, oh man, this is a close fight. But I thought I'd done enough to win. Ronnie said, you, you won this fight. And Dai said, you won this fight, you won this fight. And then um, I just waited, waited. And then when they put my hand up, I couldn't believe it. So Harry Mullen predicted you'd beat tough Sean Murphy, and you did in your first defence. But there was still an element of people wanting to prove so you, you proven yourself at world class, and that came really against Colin McMillan, didn't it? Yeah, 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 it did. Um, it was one of them kind of fights. It was like good fights. It was um, he was a bit awkward, like you know, and um, he didn't really come to fight, but he was like box, box, box. But then uh, I just like, keep my composure, and then obviously um, I just outworked him in, in the end. I was a little bit too strong for him, like you know, so. Um, going into that fight, did you feel motivated to prove these people wrong that you did belong at that level? Definitely, yeah, because I, I rated Conor McMillan as a great fighter, and obviously I seen him fight up and coming as well, like and then of all his class. Um, I know he had a bit of an injury last time. I'm not sure if he had a weakness in his left hand, uh, his left hand, sorry, shoulder, shoulder, like, yeah. yeah, shoulder injury. But um, for myself, I just got to take advantage and just try and try and rough him up. And don't give him a chance to work, like you know. So, was that you arriving at world class and proving that you belong there, or do you think the Davison fight proved that anyway? I feel like uh, I was a, a true a top class fighter, but then I, I had to prove myself when, when I defended it. So, um, I believe that was a true world uh, champion, but then some people were saying, Oh, it's a bit of a fluke, but then I proved them all wrong. Yeah, so, you then went on this miraculous run, didn't you? And then Paul Hodgkinson came next. Boxing News predicted that he beat you because of his power, yeah. I know, I know, obviously the experience, you know, I same with him, he was a great fighter, I was so nervous for a fight, I was very nervous, but um, I was confident, but I was very nervous, and I thought myself, um, it brought, he brought the best on me, like, you know, I was prepared for him, I, was, um, I studied him, so my, my jab worked quite well in that fight, I heard him many times in that fight as well, so um, I just boxed up my skin. And you said that was one of the hardest fights for your career, though? Um, you could say it was, yeah, it was a hard, physical hard fight, yeah, but... Um, you know, I had more physical harder fights than then Hoskins and when being getting hit like when you're getting hit a lot and then yeah, that's a hard fight there. Yeah. So I got caught a few times but I feel like it was hard, but you know, I had harder fights than the Hoskins and fight, yeah. Other champions at the time included Kevin Kelly and Tom Boom Boom Johnson. Were they on your radar? Definitely, yeah. No, I just you know, was hoping to get a unification fight. But um, you know, we were talking about me me fighting um Tom Johnson and then uh, obviously Kelly um Kevin Kelly, but um, you know, somehow it just didn't come off. Did you have a preference of fighting either one of those? Was there one yeah, that you really fancy? Yeah, I to go. Um, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I wouldn't mind fighting um, Tom Boo Boo Johnson, Johnson, like you know, he's tall. He's tall. You know, um, you know, I think I would have gone to, got to him with the body shots. With um, Kevin Kelly, he's more slick, like you know, he's um, so poor. He would have been quite tricky. But um, mm. yeah. Uh, you then beat Freddie Cruz on points. Um, you're still improving here as a champion, aren't you? Yeah, that was getting getting better every fight, you know, some of the fights. Um, Freddie Cruz was good, he was quite slick, a um, bit awkward, but um, yeah, every fight I was getting that bit more experience, I, I was improving, like, you know. And then this run of stellar domestic opponents carries on when Boxing News picked you to beat Duke McKenzie, and afterwards Boxing News said uh, Barry McGuigan would have been proud to have thrown the left to the body that you did that night. Yeah, it was a perfect punch, it? you know, they called that the perfect punch, the left hook to the body. Um, I've been working on the body shots um, for them, obviously, Duke McKenzie. I think he's a little bit taller than me, he's just slightly taller than me. He's quite upright, sometimes a little bit upright fighter. And then I worked on our left foot, boom, I caught him. It was a perfect punch. I did say to Duke, who I spoke to yesterday, I said that I was coming to speak to you, and he said, tell me, or get him to tell you how he managed to make the weight. Was it ever tough for you making the weight? Yeah, it was, yeah, but I was natural. I was a natural favourite, you know, I train hard. Um, you know, I make the weight pretty easy, really. Um, yeah, it was all down to the uh, mindset, the way I train, and my diet, I had a good diet as well, like, that's, that's important. Like, you get some people very big for their weights, they train hard. I had a very high metabolism, you know, my, I was burned fat quite easy, so that's the reason why I was so fit. Like. And by now you're turning the ice rink into a fortress, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. It's, um, I never lost any ice rink, that's, um, you know, it's an it's amazing arena and um, great support as well. Yeah, Harry Muller wrote of that night that there was a nerve-tingling atmosphere and obviously Harry had been around the block, so mm. for him to have written that, that show, it goes to show. But this is now one of the great runs in modern British boxing, isn't it, with Macmillan, Hodgkinson and Duke? Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah, definitely, and next world champions, you know, um, I was rated as a good world champion, I, I think I was a boxer of the year one year, in 94, 
and I won the, um, the Welsh Sports, Sports Personality Year. I, you know, I had a good run. So yeah, um, it's nice to um, get that recognition. Like you know, you did have a couple more defences, um, but at what point was this guy called Nassim Hamed on your radar as, as a possible opponent? Well, you know, it was, it was um, Frank Warren wanted to put a fight on, really. And I think he just wanted like um, an English fighter to take um, the world title away from Welsh fighter. So I think he was a little bit thin about it. He was trying to get me beat for, for years, really, I think. <laughs> I don't know. Do you think even though you were doing good business at the ice rink? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like um, he was hoping that McGuinn would beat me, but I beat him. And then he was hoping that Jim McKenzie would beat me, but I beat him. But, um, you know, but then he finally got him beat in the end by, um, by um, Naz. What was your What were your first impressions of Naz? Um, good fighter. Um, you know, I I've, I just underestimated him. I thought I thought um, he's going up to my weight. I was a, an actually big fair weight. I believe I had a tight, good um, defense. Obviously, he won't get through my defense that easy. But I realized when I actually boxed him, he was better than better than I thought. Really, um, you know, just wish I had that bit more preparation for the fight as well. I wasn't happy um, me fighting him in that time, in space of time, because I boxed. Um, in July, at the end of July, and I had to fight him by, by September. Like, you know, I, I, was, I got married as well. Um, I got married to my wife, obviously, I went to Angela, and then uh, the next minute they rushed me into fighting him in September. I, I prepared three and a half weeks to fight him. Um, uh, um, not you, I mean, Naz. Nice. Yeah, nice, sorry. So, you thought going into that, there was more, that you, you didn't think there was as much substance behind the style of Naz, though? You know, um, yeah, I, I seen him fight, and um, he's um, very unorthodox. And I realized, well, oh, he looks good, but then I realized how strong he was. And when I actually went into the ring with him, he's stronger than I thought, really, and very fast, and punched different angles. But, um, but against someone like him, you got prepared. You know, you got um, prepared. I didn't really move to my left enough. And with softballs, you got to keep moving to your left. Now, um, obviously, Brad showed a way to beat Nam Nas. And when, when Brad boxed Nas, Nas and Nam, he just showed a way to beat him. He kept on moving his left foot and left hook straight rights. Coming into the fight, um, there was a lot of, I don't know if you'd say bad blood, but some of the publicity wasn't necessarily in your favour. For example, there was an advertising van driving around Cardiff, blaring out Naz's voice, saying, I'm Prince, I'm going to be the king. Mm -hmm. uh, how did that stuff make you feel? Because it was like a... Um, there was a flyer campaign as well with that, I think, with the Prince and King stuff. Yeah, you know, it was, it was sort of like, it was me like, and I thought I'd just try and focus and try and get on with the fight, really. but um, I don't know, it's the way it is, and he's a showman, isn't he? And um, it's the way it is. <laughs> um, so you, you said he was stronger than you thought during the fight, but tell us about the atmosphere that night as well, because yeah. you, you were out of the ice rink now. Yeah, yeah, it was a different kind of arena. Um, Sixteen thousand fans. Yeah, it was good, good, good atmosphere. And, um, but um, I went to the fight, but I just wasn't focused. I wasn't one hundred percent focused. Um, I feel like um, I should have a bit more preparation. Um, actually, for the waiting for that fight, I, I come in slightly over. I was about half a point over, and normally I'm always dead on the weight or under the weight to show that my body wasn't quite one um, hundred percent fit. Like you know, I was fit. I was always naturally fit, but um, no excuses. But he was a good fighter. Against someone like him, you got to be 100%. And then I want to you know, take my hat off to him. He have done well. So, um, yeah. What did you make of the way that he talked pre fight? Yeah, it was irritating me because at the time I was going, I went, um, I went through a little personal problems, the court case between Barry Earn and Frank Warren and everything, and, you know, this and that. But yeah, it was one good, like, you know, but, um, and you know, you got fins on your minds, but um, you got to be 100%. They always say a happy fighter is a good fighter, but I wasn't really happy with myself the way they set me up for the fights. But um, against a top top fighter, like you know, he was he was a good fighter, Naz. You know, Claude Abrams was ringside that night. He said that Naz demonstrated unique and unorthodox skills, the likes of which we've never seen before. Yeah, he was good. He was good in the way the way he um, obviously um, adapted to my style, like you know, but um. I didn't move enough really. I mean, when I boxed him, I should have moved um, more to my left and kept on moving more lateral. Like, um, but um, you know, he was a good fighter. He was good. Naz's performance that night divided opinion. Some people thought that it was a clinical performance and they were very impressed, mm -hmm. and other people thought he was very insulting with the way that he behaved that night. Yeah, you know, that's a part of a showman. Isn't he? He's a showman, isn't he? so after the fight, he actually won. won he was in the quite nice. He said, um, "You took my best shots. I thought I would have um, got you earlier, but um, yeah, you he you're a good fighter. You know, he, he's actually he was alright after the fight, but then he's a showman. Isn't he, that's the way he is. Isn't he? So 
he likes to take the take them take the mic at everyone, isn't he? Like, what was it like being in there that night with him doing that? It was quite um, it was frustrating because um, actually when because I went into the fight um, underprepared because I only trained trained three and a half weeks for fights and also I was a few things in my mind the court cases and everything not to say but I did I was fit I was fit but um, you know it, he made it worse he just you know, made it worse and he knows that I went into that fight short notice and he he knows that. Have you seen him since? Um, not lately. I seen him um, a few years ago when uh, my my older son Luke boxed up in um, Wembley. Um, yeah, I've, I've seen him. Um, it was going to be about eight years ago. Um, he, he looked a bit overweight. <laughs> Did you chat? Uh, yeah, we had a little talk. And I said, "Yeah, man, it was, I'm Stevie." He shook my hand. Said, "You looking well, Steve?" I said, "Yeah, yeah, not too bad." And then for some reason, I just put on my top. I said, "Look at this." I showed my six pack. He said, "I laugh." He said, "You're an athlete. You're an athlete." And um, yeah, we had a little catch up and a little, you know, it's all right. Do you have any hard feelings with him at all about that night and that fight, the show, and anything else? I can't blame Naz. At the end of the day, you know, at the end of the day, he won, won the fight for all time. He obviously, he, he knew I was a good fighter, but then, you know, it's the way it is, isn't it? That's, uh, that's the way Finn is, and the way Finn's are, like, you know, so I can't t turn, the t back, um, turn the time back. I feel if I was back in time, I, I wouldn't have took the fight. I would have said, no, I'm not prepared. But they said if I didn't take the fight, they would have said it would have uh, stripped me of the world title. I would have fight them another time. But um, they, I would have eventually boxed him. But I wish I was 100% fight, 100% um, for that fight. But it's the way it is. Uh, his trainer Brendan Ingle said after that, Naz is going to be as good, if not better, than Muhammad Ali. He didn't quite make it, no. but he did pretty well for himself. Though, didn't yeah, he, he did well. He was, um, you know, obviously very powerful puncher. I mean, he's probably one of the best fight, featherweights um, Brit um, coming from Britain. Like you know, definitely. Yeah, he should he have quite, done more in his career? Yeah, I think he should have done more. I don't know what happened to him. Um, I don't know. Somehow he got beat by Bred and he won the same fight. And ever since then, I think he took his confidence away. Like you know, but I got told he had hand trouble. So it's weird, isn't it? Some some fighters get hand trouble, but some fighters get on get on with it. Like you know, Mayweather had hand trouble, you know, throughout his career. Weird. Did you just get on with it after that Naz fight and after the court case and everything else, or did that knock you back? Having obviously run up seven defenses, how devastating was that period afterwards? You only fought once the next year. Yeah, yeah, that was dumb. Um, I, mean, I was quite upset in the way the way the way he stitched me up for the fight and everything. You know, I'm not taking nothing away from Naz. He was a great fighter. I come across a, a great fighter, you know, and um, he was good. I just wish I was 100% for that fight. Imagine what, what kind of fight it would have been. It would have been interesting. I would have took them all away, you know? Yeah. Um, so you had that one fight, and then you, you said Billy Hardy beat you fair and square. Yeah, you know, I went into that fight. That's another one I tell you the truth about that fight as well. Um, no excuses, but then by the fight, I tell you, you know, um, I had a f heavy flu, say about three weeks before the fight. I was, I was in my training, and then some of that flu set me back a little bit. I just had a bad um, flu poison and everything, some more. Um, but I got back in the train and say the last week I was getting back to normal, but I was still on antibiotics, um, antibiotics, and um, I took them. I took them my last one about well, day before the fight, and I went into the fight with my half fit, like you know. So, you know, no excuses, like. But um, I didn't say it at the time, like. But um, yeah, it's weird, isn't it? So Billy won that, and then he called out Naz. Uh, he obviously would get the Naz fight down mm. the line. Um, the immediate aftermath of Naz, we said about perhaps Naz not reaching his potential. Did you lose something in that fight with Naz that you never got back? Um, yes and no, but um, I, I feel like I did get back to my old form um, when I was, um, okay, I lost against um, Billy Addy, and then I, after Billy Addy, I, my mindset is for, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. Um, I got back to my old form, I, I was boxing quite well. I, was, um, I, I won the Intercontinental, um, WBO Intercontinental title. And I defended that, and then um, I was on an unbeaten run for a while. For a while. You had a, you've had, had an extraordinary career, like, and, and even now you're going into a, n a new phase of your career where you won mm. five, and then you went to South Africa, yeah, and you fought Welcome Nikita, and he was 40 wins, three losses, and mm. then you gave him a draw, and he never fought again. Um, I'm about, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm about to hear you say it was in South Africa. Mm. I should have won. I won it, but hands not. <laughs> Big time because when one of the judges give um, me a ball with eight nine rounds, one give a draw and then one give it to win by one point. So overall, I still won. won I still beat him, but they still give it a draw like this. So yeah, won that big time.
Yeah. And then you're still fighting a good company, not just fighting Nikita, but then um, Manuel Cal Calvo in Spain, um, and then Kratsev, Martin Kratsev. Yeah, yeah, that's it, yeah. So yeah. you become a European champ, and yeah. you're... I think it's just it's astonishing to think that you've gone from you basically have a series of huge fights. Yeah, no, I always fought um, good fighters. You know, I'm, I won a European as well. That's a good title to win. So it's one step away from the world title. But I feel when I was a European champion, I feel I should have had a, a, a world title shot. But then um, I come across some Mexican and he was a good fighter. Had okay, a bit of a Yeah, yeah, a bit of a setback. I was winning the fights on points. Then he caught me in the 11th round. It's unlucky, like you know. So, it takes one punch in it, just change the fight round, like. Yeah. yeah. Um, by now, how are you, do you have an end game with boxing in mind, or is the idea still to, to you're still fighting to win an, a world title back? Um, when after what fight? After, so after Ramirez. Yeah. So do you still do you still think you'll be a world champion again, or is it? Is um, yeah, yeah. I always believe I could still be something. Like you know, I um, you know I was I lost against him, and then um, yeah, I went through. A lot of losses then after that, and I realised, nah, that's, that's you know, far, far the time got to me, like, you know, so. We mentioned that in the messages yesterday about fighting off Father Time. Yeah. But there was one Carlos Ramirez, uh, Istvan Coco Kovacs, Cassius Beloy, and then Calvo again. Like, none of those are gimmies. They're all hard fights, aren't they? Tough fights, yeah. All but it was the fights. Steve Conway one where you realised that's yeah, that. definitely, yeah, that's it. And, yeah. and even against um, uh, Scott Addison, you know, you know, I got stopped by him, and but... Um, yeah, he was a good, good fighter, he was strong, very strong. Well, for the Scott Harrison one, Boxing News said that it was kind of a bit like you and Paul Hodgkinson in the sense that you, the new generation was coming through. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, and I was on the way down, he's on the way up, and um, he, was, he was stronger than I thought, really. And he said, he said, oh, good fight to you. I said, it would have been an interesting fight if you were at your peak. He said that to me, like, he said, yeah, no. Mm. But, um, you know, it's weird, isn't it? How good was Scott? Very good, I, um, I rated him, uh, very strong. Um, surprisingly better than I thought really, um, I thought he looked basic, but he's a good, good boxer, got a good jab, very strong and um, he could get distance quite well. He didn't have really fast hands, his hands weren't that quick, but somehow he seemed to get the timing quite well. You announced your retirement straight after losing to Steve Conway, didn't you? Yeah, I have to man, so um, when I got beat by him, um, same without fights, I had a good start and then somehow um, I just faded, like, you know, I just run on steam. No, I say run on steam, I just didn't really have that snap to keep going, like, you know. How hard was that decision to say that that's that? It was hard, you know, it's hard for any fighter when they've when they been at the top. Um, you know, you lose against a person who you should have beat easy when you're at your peak. So that was the same what happened with Sugar Leonard when he got beat by Camacho, like, you know, and um, yeah, it's, it's, it's quite sad, but, um, you know, it's the way it is, isn't it, you know, can't do much of all, like, how hard is it to resist the temptation of coming back, like the well, first year, first two years? Well, when I was retired um, from that fight, I just thought, I had temptations a few times, mm, I might make it come back, oh, I might do it, but I just didn't bother, like, you know, I thought that's it, you know, your man's game, innit, so. What did you do to replace the buzz of, the f of fight night? Um, what I did, um, when I retired, um, I went on a couple of courses, I went on a gym instructor course, um, personal training course. And I thought myself, mm, I was getting into personal training and um, eventually be a bo boxing coach. And then I want my boxing coach license and everything. And yeah, so I want to. You know. Did you keep training all the way through? Yeah, and I kept my training. I actually, um, when I retired, I just stopped training for a bit for a few months. I just just lost some, um, you know, interest in training. And then I got back into training. And when I went on a couple of courses, I went on a gym instructor course, and I got back into training. I just trained a bit different to what I used to train than weight training. Bit of crossfit and everything, so yeah. You mentioned being married, and obviously you've been married now a long time. How much did that help you in in that transition from being a fighter to a retired fighter, having someone there for you? Yeah, it's important. Like you know, she um, she supported me as well, my wife, and um, she was encouraging, very encouraging to say, "Oh, go on, you can fight. You got you got something left." But then she knew, she knew, she wanted me to retire after um, the Scott Addison fight. She thought, "Oh, you should retire now. I should give it." No, and I went, "No, I want to give a go. I'll give one more go." And then um, she was glad I retired, really. And um, she knew, you know, my my time. I had a good run, but um, you know, that's the way it is, isn't it? Did you need to work again? Um, yes and no. Yeah, I, yeah. I think I needed to work. I I, don't know, I got nice house and everything, but um, the end of the day, when you, I was on good money at the time, and then when you're on good money, 
that kind of money stops them when you don't fight them on it so you've got to keep on working in it really isn't it? sometimes um, I've got, I can't put my money away I got a nice house or anything but um yeah I had to keep working you know they, did you get the credit you deserved no I don't think I got enough cre credit I deserve no I feel um being um Welsh being black not just being black you know, but I'm, I feel like um, I should get a bit more recognition I feel like I should have had MB by now, so, you know, I opened a gym for the amateurs um, a couple of years ago, and you know, I trained amateurs, and, you know, I've I done a lot for the community as well, like, you know, I'm going to open a new gym soon as well, now, so. What was the pinnacle of your career? Um, There's a lot of good wins in there. Yeah, you know, obviously, the best is obviously when I won the world title, and against um, John Davidson. And, and then, I think, one of my best wins in my career was I wanted to beat Paul Hodgkinson, that was, a, you know, I had a great year that year, and I won um, sports players out of the year. Um, I was boxer of the year as well, fighter of the year as well. So yeah, it was, um, I had a lot that year. Who was the toughest guy you faced? Toughest? I tell you, what, I think the toughest one I, I faced was um, um, that Ramirez. Okay. Was very tough, very tough, um, tough Mexican. Um, yeah, it was a tough fight at, at the time, and then I, I, got, I got a bit tired. I was um, I was on the ropes. I was on a little breather. Next to me, he caught me a good shot. And yeah. Do you wonder what would have happened to your career if you'd fought one of those top Americans rather than Naz? I wish I did know. Anyway, yeah, I know. But um, but Naz was something special. Like, you know, he was, he was a good fighter. I, you know, even though I wasn't 100% pre prepared for the fight, but he was a great, good, good fighter. I feel like I, I could have beat um, Tom Boom Boom John Johnson or even Kevin Kelly. Would you have liked them over here at the ice rink or uh, at the Arms Park, or would you have liked to have gone over to America? And I'd like to go to America. Would you? Yeah, it would be nice to go over there. Um, you know, just get used to the, obviously the America, fight in America. I never box in America, so yeah, it would have been great. All through those defences, what were you doing for sparring? Were you flying people in, or were you boxing local guys? Or, or luckily, we had a great stable. Like Digan had a great stable. I, had, um, I was a spar with um, um, Robbie Regan. Um, Great fighters, up and coming fighters. Yeah, it was, it was good, good sparring. Okay, so you Michael with... Smith, I spar with. He was a bit, a little bit heavy. Me, he was a, he was a welterweight, good fighter. Okay, um, with regards to Naz, so if you were to see him walking down the street, what would you say to him? Oh, I say hello to him. Yeah, the other day I say, yeah, what's happening, Naz? What's happening? Yeah, I'll go to him. Listen, man. Yeah, he's um, he's he's a bit of a character, isn't he? You know, so um, yeah, he's uh, he's he's all right. He's all right. He's a bit of a showman, isn't he? So. And then two of your sons have got into boxing. You know, there's there's a lot of fighters will, that will say, "I don't want my sons to box." Yeah, have, first have of you all, had when conf it, conflict over that. Yeah, when they were growing up, I thought myself, mm, I don't really want them to box. But then they had to come along the gym when I was when I was fighting. And Luke, Luke, my oldest one, who's always watched me train, and um, Jacob, my younger son, he didn't really watch me train all because he was too young at the time. But um, yeah, but um, they just want to box. I think why not? Go for it. You know, I feel like my two boys got a lot of talent. My my oldest boy Luke, he had so much talent, but I, he wasted his talent. But he didn't really continue it. He didn't have that mindset to sit, keep going. Like you know, that's he just he had one up. loss, didn't he, to Tony Pace? But was yeah. a very good fighter. Seemed, yeah, he seemed to be going in the right direction. You know, you know, he had a bit of a setback against Tony Pace, but then I feel like you know, it was just a bit of a setback. He was trying to get a rematch, but it didn't come off in the end. So I don't know why he just didn't carry on. But that's the way it is. Isn't it? He got a lot of fighters out there. He got a lot of talent. They said the mindset's not there. The mind's just mind to say, well, I can't be bothered training. You know? oh, I don't know though. They give up then. And what about Jake? How's he doing? He's doing all right. Yeah, he's eight and zero. He's unbeaten. He's um, he had a knockout the year. Um, well, a couple of years ago. He's a hell of a knockout. He knocked the guy clean out. You know, he, luckily he was all right in the end. And he knocked him cold for about five minutes. It was, a, it was an amazing punch. It was a backhand, and then boom, um, core screw uppercuts. And um, yeah, he was on an MCK show. The very first uh, show he boxed on, yeah. So um, yeah, he got a hell of a lot of power. What are the main things that you've been able to teach them? And I don't mean technically, but I mean about the sport and how it works. Well, discipline, um, dedication, the way they train. We train a bit different now. Um, this day and age is slightly different. Now, is I don't want to have them running ropes too too much running. We run, but we do sprints, more sprints, and more um, gym work, like you know. So and obviously, span is important, like. So yeah, he's um he's got Jacob, he's very talented. He's a southpaw, a right-handed southpaw. He hits very hard. He hits hard in both hands. So I feel like he could go all the way. 
When you said you were torn about them fighting, was it because you didn't want to see them getting hit or because of the type of business that boxing is? Like I said, the type of business. You know, it's just like a, um, it's a rough game, isn't it? It's, just, uh, it's a tough game. You've got to be really good to be a good, good fighter. You know, you want to be a talented fighter. Uh, if you're an average fighter, you're going to get hurt, you know, so... Back then, when, when people were writing you off a lot, as they did, what was the worst thing you read about yourself? Has anything stayed with you? Um, well, about being a journeyman, like, you know, um, I, don't, I, don't, I believe I, I want a journeyman. I was, okay, I lost fights up and coming, but it was very close. You know, and then I didn't go in there and survive. I just tried to win a fight, and I just lost by half a point. And so we look at all my losses, half a point, half a point, half a point. Against um, maybe um, Driscoll is a probably about one or two points, but then yeah, and Henry Armstrong, he, he beat me by a couple of points, so most of my losses were by half a point and I thought I won. In many ways you're a great legacy, or you've left a great legacy for people who lose a couple early on in their career and might be discouraged because you've shown obviously through perseverance even getting a few bad hands on the way that if you stick with it then things can change. Definitely, yeah, yeah. You know, I believe in that. You know, there's a few fights out there. I've got a couple of losses in the record, but then they still stuck to it, like you know, and done well, like you know. So, you know, same with me. Did that not? Was that not something you said to Luke? Uh, look what I did. Yeah, of course I did. did. Yeah, I did say. I drummed in his head. I said, "Look, you know, I lost my fights. I come back. I lost on all them fights. I still come back and won the world title." So I know that, Dad. I know that. But you're, you're different, though. You're, you're, you're mad, you've you got a strong mindset, isn't it? Just, you know. <laughs> Where is that mindset from? I don't know, it's just um, maybe my upbringing. Um, one parent family, I was brought up in a, in a pretty rough area, Ely, but didn't have much. And, um, you know, I just wanted to be a champion, you know. So you always say the best fighters come from uh, rough back, backgrounds, like um, my, my Tyson come from a rough background, same um, Giovanni come from a rough background, you know. I look at him now, you know, so... What's the future? I wish as much as um, Mayweather, but, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know he's, a, he's a great fighter. He's a good bu a businessman as well, yeah, so... What does the future hold, then? Are you going to always stay involved in boxing? Definitely, yeah. You know, I'm obviously, I'm a boxing coach now. Um, I train Jacob, my son, and I'm obviously... I'm going to open a, a new gym soon, very soon. It's going to be called Robinson's Boxing Gym. Um, that should be opening, hopefully, on about February, March. Hopefully, so um, yeah, we're just looking around for premises. So I can't wait, no? Yeah. It's, it's one of the most extraordinary careers, I think, in British boxing. The fact that you've gone from, you know, and I'm not going to try and drive this home, but obviously, you know, what the situation was in terms of someone who had a very mixed record to someone who not only got the world title, but then actually went on an extraordinary run and mm. showed that he belonged at that level. Of course, definitely, yeah, I know. Um, it's an interesting um, career, like, you know, it's. Um, it's amazing, isn't it? It's, just, it's a good story as well. And also, um, I'm going to have my first book coming out soon now. So, um, a book, my very first book on myself. Um, so, Amanda Aubrey is going to um, obviously write the book for me. Brilliant. All right, Steve. Well, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. It's been right, good nice to speak to you. Cheers, mate. Thank, thank you. you.